Welcome to Vintage SF. I'm Richard Rempel. Today we're going to look at the second book in the Ace Science Fiction Specials Series 3. There's 12 of them. Green Eyes by Lucius Shepard. Copyright May 1984. As I've said before, the first eight books in this series are introduced by Terry Carr. I've covered the general introduction in my intro to the entire series, but there also is an introduction to each book. Terry Carr says, Lucius Shepard's Green Eyes is a very different and exciting science fiction novel and will introduce most readers to a strong new talent. It is his first novel. Though he's published short stories and novelettes in Universe and the magazine of fantasy and science fiction. This is a novel about zombies, but it's not a fantasy novel. It considers and explains how such beings might come to be scientifically, much as James Blish once treated werewolves in There Shall Be No Darkness, and Susie McKee Sharness dealt with vampires in The Vampire Tapestry. Shepard's speculations are startling, but the story that grows from them is even more so. It's a tale of intrigue, adventure, and characters both warm and sinister, set against a richly depicted near-future background in the southern United States, where experiments with life after death inevitably attract the devotees of older, darker cults. You may think at one point or another that you can see where the plot is leading, but don't be too sure. Shepard's imagination is unfailingly daring. There are wonders here for which I couldn't prepare you if I tried. There is a chemistry breakthrough. If a recently dead person is injected with the drug, they'll be reanimated. There is a period of disorientation and when they start to come to their senses, they're introduced to a guide, a mentor, a companion. These companions are often young and of the opposite sex. That bit of sexual tension aids in their lucidity. Most burn brightly like a match, and then go out within an hour or two. But there are some who are long haulers. This is the story of one of those long haulers, Donnell Harris, and his companion, Jocundra Verrett. She is tall and slim and beautiful. They have a rocky start in their relationship, but eventually warm to each other. The long haulers seem to have run of the facility that they're stored in, but they are prisoners. Some of them are horrific. But one is a brilliant scientist, and through his experiments, he's discovering the power that the reanimated people have. He passes on information to Janelle about their powers over electromagnetic forces. They can see the electrical patterns of minds and the forces around people. Perhaps you might call it the aura. And they can manipulate it. One way that they can manipulate these forces is that they can look at a camera that is recording them and actually cause it to shut down through their control of electromagnetics. But they do this in secret. The scientists wonder why their cameras are always going out, and they don't realize it's in the patient's power that this happens. The head of this reanimation project is Dr. Anthony Edmund, MD, PhD. He says in an excerpt from his own book, Conjure Men, My Work with Azawa at Tulane. The character and climate of shadows, no doubt, exerted an influence on my actions. This great manor house glooming on the edge of the swamp, amid sentinel oaks and penitential moss, inhabited by dead men, come to life again. Here were both magical setting and characters, the stuff from which great drama arises, and perhaps unconsciously I was trying to spark such a drama obeying the commands of some inner theatricality which the house had stirred in my depths, my deep consciousness. Perhaps, were I to be injected with the Izawa bacterium after death, I might well reincarnate as a playwright. But each morning before rounds, as I took my constitutional, I would look back at the house and experience a thrill of excitement and fear. From a distance, 
its windows appeared dead black, as if it contained no furniture and walls and lives, but only a ripe and contaminating darkness. We inhabited that darkness, and I alone of all the project dared strike matches and dispel the gloom. Most of my colleagues, I believe, fear what would be revealed and satisfied themselves with behavioral studies. But this was an experiment, not a behavioral clinic. We were there to learn, not to footnote, extant knowledge. And what did we learn? We uncovered new forces. We took a step along what may be an endless path toward divinity. We redirected the entire thrust of psychoanalytic theory and, as with all knowledge, we found that deeper and more compelling mysteries yet lay beyond those we had reduced to the security of fact. One of my favorite lines of the book, Don't waste your breath on him. Harrison regarded me with displeasure. He's just random molecules bound together by the stickum of his education. After witnessing one of the patients being dissected after they die, Donnell decides he wants to escape the facility, and Jokundra agrees to go with him. This leads to a wild journey in the southern United States in the bayou. They encounter a healing preacher with seemingly miraculous powers, an occult-like voodoo leader who has a magnetic power of her own over people. Donnell starts to see that some of the things we thought of as miracles or supernatural are actually some sort of manipulation of electromagneticism. This becomes a dark, horrific novel in the second half. Will Donnell and Jokundra survive? Will their relationship deepen? And what is the future for these medical zombies? The title Green Eyes refers to a medical effect of this serum there is a glowing green quality in their eyes. Green Eyes is a novel of two halves. The first, mostly science fiction, although there are horrific things that happen within the research facility. And the second is an escape, a road trip, into dark, horrific territories. In the entry for Lucia Shepard, in the Encyclopedia of Science Fiction, John Clute says, the writer whom Shepard seems at times to most resemble is Joseph Conrad, for both authors respond to the places of the world with imaginative avarice and a hallucinated intensity of portrayal. Both create deeply alienated protagonists whose displacement from the venues in which they live generates constant ironies and regrets, and both tend to subordinate mundane resolutions of plot to moments of death-like transcendence, characteristics of horror in SF. There were times that I had difficulty following Shepard's prose, and I wasn't exactly sure what he was trying to tell us was happening. This was a weird journey into our minds, into neurons, the electrical paths, and the magnetic aura that we have. I give this science fiction horror novel 6 out of 10. This was the first Lucia Shepard novel that I've read. I have another one in the science fiction masterworks, Life During Wartime from 1987. I believe this is his second novel, so I will revisit his work in the future. Have you read Lucia Shepard? What are your thoughts? What do you think of scientific explanations for zombies? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time, keep reading.